investment by firms will depend uh, positively on the income within the economy because firms will want to invest more when things go well and it depends negatively on the uh, rate of return of bonds. Remember that since we are in the short run and prices don't change, there is no inflation, so our uh, real interest rate is equal to the nominal interest rate of bonds. So if firms have to decide to use their income between uh, physical capital and uh, bonds, they will use the rate of return of bonds, the real interest rate, as a reference. If this rate of return is high, bonds are more profitable, and the opportunity cost of investing is too high. So this will diminish investment, and firms will uh, just go to buy bonds. So this real interest rate is the opportunity cost that firms face when investing in physical capital. So the investment function looks like this, autonomous investment plus all this. These two guys are positive, so uh, investment depends negatively on the interest rate. And if we plot it, it will look like this. When we decrease the interest rate, we increase investment, and when we uh, increase output, we shift this function to the right and we increase investment. So remember, investment depends positively on income, output, and negatively on the real interest rate of bonds. Now, if we put it all together, we realize that this depends on Y and this depends on Y. So we want to isolate those two guys to plot demand as a function of income. The vertical intercept will just be all this, which is what we call autonomous spending, minus D2 times the nominal interest rate. Remember, that's the part of demand that does not depend on income. It's just there when there is no zero income. And then, since C is a function of Y, this will just be the slope of this line, which represents aggregate demand as a function of income. So we want to see what happens in the goods market. Here, the equilibrium is given by the points where demand is equal to supply. But those equilibrium points are just points along this line, which is the 45 degree line. And the intercept between those two gives us the equilibrium level of output. If we're here, then aggregate demand is, ag is higher than the equilibrium level. So there is an excess demand for goods for the present period. So, since firms are overwhelmed by the demand, they have to uh, use the goods they had saved before as inventories to be able to meet the demand. So, there is an inventory disinvestment. The other way around, whenever there is an excess supply of goods, there is not enough demand, so these extra uh, goods that are not sold are put into inventories. So it is clear that the equilibrium point is that when there is no uh, uh, no increase or decrease in inventories. So remember, in the equilibrium in the goods market, supply equals demand. And we call the IS investment savings uh, those pairs of um, Y and uh, interest rate that gives us uh, an equilibrium in the goods market. So all these points along the IS curve are actually equilibriums in the goods market. They're along this line. And these plot as a function of the nominal interest rate. In reality, it would be the real, but remember, prices don't change. So real 
is the same as nominal. So remember, along the IS curve, we find all the equilibrium points in the goods market whenever supply equal demand for goods.